Ryan, it's good to have you with us. I understand you look at the market holistically. You've got some fundamental and technical reasons to be optimistic, even if some sentiment readings are telling you otherwise. Talk me through your theories here. Yeah, Courtney, it's kind of remarkable because we just had a huge month in stocks. Um, you know, we saw the Nasdaq almost up uh, over over five percent. You saw the major indices hitting new highs, like you mentioned, the Dow again hitting another new high. So you would think the animal spirits would be out right now, uh, but we're really seeing the opposite. You saw sentiment come down last week. Anecdotally, I can just tell you with our client base for the thousand families we manage, uh, you know, people aren't that bullish right now. They're all waiting for that next shoe to drop. And I think if you start looking at the economic data, um, you're seeing all these issues with supply chains right now. Um, we're looking at, you just mentioned a strikes happening with labor costs are a big issue. Uh, companies have big issues right now when it comes to their overhead. But what you're seeing on these earnings calls, and it's been a phenomenal quarter for profits, right? I mean, so far, you've seen over 80% of companies beat on the top and bottom line, but they're all saying the same thing. Uh, we're going to raise prices on you, the consumer. And what you're seeing is you would think the if prices are going up, that consumers would buy less. But we're seeing the exact opposite right now. You know, consumers are willing to buy at the higher prices. And you'll have what I call maybe a consumer who's more price insensitive than you've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes sense. You know, we're locked down with COVID. People have these animal spirits right now. They're sitting with tons of cash. We have over, you know, two, almost $2 trillion since before the pandemic sitting in cash right now that people didn't have before the pandemic and wages are going up. So people have money to spend. And I argue here that could drive the economy for a long, long time. And that's what's driving profits. And that's probably going to keep driving the stock market higher. I don't think you're going to see a big correction like a lot of people are fearing. I just want to go back to your point about consumers. Right now, it does seem like the consumer is pretty strong and they're able to take some of these price increases in stride. But I can't imagine that that continues forever if they're not seeing a subsequent increase in their wages or other prices even out for them. At some point, they're going to be more discerning and make some choices. How will we know when to prepare for that and what that means for the ripple effect across the economy if two thirds to three quarters of our GDP is still consumer spending? Yes, right. We're always depending on the fact that Americans love to spend, right, more than anyone in the world. Um, and I think it comes down to productivity, right? The question becomes, are we going to go to a stagflation like you had in the 70s, where prices of goods and services exceeded what wages went up by right over that decade? And that's where productivity is going to be a big deal. Uh, companies are spending a lot of money on productivity, trying to be as productive as possible, because we are going into a labor shortage, right? There, there's no getting around it. You look at the amount of jobs that are open right now and the amount of Americans that can fill those jobs, it's a big, big problem. Mm -hmm. So you are going to see wages continue to rise. But the question is, are wages going to rise faster than uh, you know, the price of goods and services? Right. And in the short term, yes, I think that is the case. And you're seeing that. And that's why you're seeing the fact that, you know, again, profits are fantastic. People can take these price hikes. But how long that can last is we're going to have to do with productivity. And can the prices of consumer goods and services come down, you know, stay in check with what, what labor costs are? And I think that's all going to come down to innovation, which you, know, okay. you should see a lot of over the course of the next decade. And so help our investors make some money, position their portfolios. It sounds like you're optimistic. You feel good about the consumer. You feel good about the markets in general. But does that mean the rising tide will lift all boats? Or do we need to be discerning when it comes to putting some money to work here on this market? Well, I think lately you haven't had to be discerning at all, <laughs> whether it's Bitcoin, NFTs, whether it's growth stocks, value stocks. You really have had the all asset rally here unless it's gold uh, or bonds, right? And interest rates have been going up. But I think that trend could continue here in the short term because, again, there's just so much cash, Courtney, sitting on the sidelines and it's going to continue to funnel in this market. But if you go back to 99, 2000, right, when the tech bubble burst, you did have pockets that were performing bubbles and you have the same thing right now. I mean, if you look at growth tech valuations, they're historically high right now. Bitcoin, your guess is as good as mine. I don't think there's any intrinsic value there, but the price continues to rise. Uh, so at some point, these bubbles probably will burst. In the meantime, those cyclical stocks, like small cap stocks, have really broken out here in the course of the last week or so. Um, anything that's very, very sensitive to the economy, if you look at financials, energy, again, small cap stocks, mm -hmm. you want to own in your portfolio. Valuations are a lot cheaper. They're more tied to the economy. And if we do see some of these bubbles burst, that's where you're going to see money go. That's exactly what you saw when the tech bubble burst back in 2000. 
you know, energy prices did phenomenal over that time frame. Even when tech stocks were going down, mm -hmm. small cap stocks did really well. Financials did really well. You could see a repeat of that here. And you're already seeing money, fun, excuse me, money funnel into those other areas of the market.